month, Jordan Lewis has this report. First appointed in 2015, her term ended last year. But amid the collapse of devolution, Judith Thompson was reappointed for another 12 months. She had indicated she'd like to stay on, but the First and Deputy First Ministers have decided against extending her contract beyond next month. Mark Thompson from Relatives for Justice has questioned the need for the office in the future. I think if you're marking her in terms of her scorecard, it's below average. When you compare to maybe commissioners like Bertha McDougall or maybe Catherine Stone, it's an opportunity now for the Executive Office to maybe have some constructive conversations about do we really need a commission? Is it the best use of public funds? And how better when we have so much access to local government right across the range uh, on the island? Uh, you know, is there a better way of doing this in the interest of victims and survivors? Judith Thompson had faced criticisms over troubles, pensions and the definition of a victim. Some believe now is the time to look at how the office works. Well, I think the real uh, test is going to be over the next period is um, how that review is carried out in terms of the operations of the Office of Commissioner, because personnel is just one issue within it. And it's how it's constructed. It's how there needs to be a, a level of independence from government and an ability for someone to be um, what they're supposed to be, a chief advocate uh, on behalf of victims and survivors, and to say sometimes uncomfortable things that are going to be uh, against governmental policy. Some victims fear there could now be a gap left until a new appointment is made, while at the same time some non-troubles rated victims believe the remit of the office should be extended to include victims of all crimes. Either way, whoever comes next will still face many of the same challenges and difficulties as their predecessor. It's a very difficult uh, job, it's a very difficult appointment. Um, uh, you know, you're answerable to the, the Executive Office, to the First Minister and Deputy First Minister. Uh, they have a very different take on what needs done in relation to the victims and survivors. Um, so, you know, it's a, it's a poison chalice in many respects, and yet, and yet, given where we are with the victims' payment scheme and uh, on a knife edge, and also the legacy questions just around the corner, uh, we really need um, a very strong and a very robust um, champion for victims and survivors. The Victims Commissioner is at the centre of one of the most divisive issues here. Attracting a successor may not be a straightforward process. Jordan Motes, UTV Live. Two former police officers will not be prosecuted over fatal shootings in Belfast over 50 years ago. One of those shot dead that day was nine-year-old Patrick Rooney, the first child to be killed in the Troubles. Well, Judith Hill joins me. Uh, Judith, remind us of the background to this case. Well, Sarah, there are three cases that the Public Prosecution Service has ruled on today, and it's important to say that these are not merely historical events. These are living memories for families. And as you say, one of the cases was Patrick Rooney, just nine years old. His seven brothers and sisters had been ushered into one room in their Divis flat home by their mum and dad because of serious rioting going on in Belfast on August the 16th, 15th, sorry, 1969. And bullets came through the walls of their family home and he was killed. Now the PPS has been looking again at his death and in his case, a former RUC officer was a reported suspect. The PPS concluded though that the evidence provided a reasonable prospect that it could be proven that it was an RUC, a police gun that fired that fatal shot, but that there wasn't enough for the prosecution to establish who fired the shot. So over 50 years on from his death, the PPS has announced its decision not to prosecute, as is the case for the family of 20-year-old Hugh McCabe and 20 eight-year-old Samuel McLarnon who were shot in separate incidents on that same day in 1969. So the PPS has reached this decision, it won't be taking the cases forward and it said it's conceded that this is a very disappointing day for the families. And any other reaction then uh, to the decision from the families? Well I've been speaking to Patrick's brother and sister Con and Sharon, they say they're deeply disappointed but not surprised by today's decision. They say that they will continue their fight for justice. Con said his father who died seven years ago had asked him to take that forward and he will continue to do so and the brother and sister they've been re reliving that horrendous family moment more than 50 years ago. We, we won't get fed up. If we die our families will take it on, our children and grandchildren will take it on and they know all about this we have told them and we never give up until we do get justice. And obviously the years have passed but memories haven't. You both were in the, the room when Patrick yes died at how fresh is it in your that's still fresh in my head you know as i've said earlier on when we went the honest man 
they were given us photographs and we described everything even before we were handed the evidence. We described where everything was and it never leaves your memory, so it doesn't, it never ever will leave our memory. You know, it's still fresh in the back of your head. I'm talking to you now and my mind's been through that room. Now, there's been strong reaction from Relatives for Justice as well. They say today demonstrates that the price of justice delayed is justice denied. George, thank you. Okay.